Okay, well, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Jane Dixon. I'm presenting to you from Fangfoss in East Riding, which is near York. Um, you've just met Adam, and together we actually split our time between the US and the sorry, the UK and the US, which is where we run our tours for Nature Trek. And we've been doing this since 2019. And um, when not on tour, I'm actually a scientific writer in the pharmaceutical industry. So this evening, I'd love to take you to Southern Texas and show you some of the Southern hospitality down there. So that being said, I wanted to start out with a couple of, um, well, a couple of pictures and images of some of the places that we stay on our Southern Texas trip. So the first is um, the Lighthouse Hotel, which is overlooking around this National Wildlife Refuge, which is just close to the Gulf of Mexico. And we stay there for a few nights on this beautiful um, Gulf view uh, scene. And uh, from there, we actually explore around this National Wildlife Refuge, where we look for hooping cranes, which I'll talk more about later. And then over on the uh, right hand side, we have the Nolly Farm Ranch. This used to be uh, a dairy ranch, um, but nowadays it is um, more attuned to hosting weddings and wildlife groups, actually. And it's a beautiful setting. And it's in the heart of the ranch country between San Antonio and the Gulf. And we spend um, a night or so there. And as you can see, the view is spectacular looking from the ranch over the lake where we can see sandhill cranes, actually, that Matthew was talking about earlier and plenty of other wildfowl. And we have access to a lot of the ranch so we can explore it and find all the wonderful wildlife that there is to see there. So now that you know what the hospitality is like. Um, we will have a look at where we're actually going on this tour. So we start in Austin, which is very far south in Texas, which of course is the red state at the bottom there. Um, so we fly into Austin and from there we head south, which where we go to the Aransas National Wildlife Refuge. And then we head further south after that to the Rio Grande Valley. And there's a, a larger map on the right hand side here showing where we start in South Padre, which is right on the coast. And then we work our way inland via Brownsville, Alamo, McAllen, and we explore all the different nature reserves of which there are plenty in this area. Um, so we spend about a week or so down in the bottom here, looking, looking at all the different wildlife that we can find in those nature reserves. And then from there, we actually head northwest up to Edwards Plateau. And there we look and explore the hill country, which is rolling hills and oak trees. And it's a different habitat and therefore many different species. And then we end our tour with a day in San Antonio, um, which is sort of the cultural start part of the tour. There's the Alamo, there's the River Walk, there's plenty of history in San Antonio. So it's a beautiful place to visit. And then we fly out to Boston again. So I'm sure you're excited to find out a little bit more about the wildlife that we'll see down in South Texas. So there are a number of birds that we can see. And I noticed that Matthew had already introduced you to some of these species previously. Um, so in South Texas, we could definitely see Greater Roadrunner, which is up on the, uh, the top right there. Um, this is quite a fascinating bird. It's a, an amazing um, predator. And we've seen them taking small snakes, lizards, uh, small birds, and we even saw one take a rabbit one day. So that was quite amazing. Um, moving down, we have the plain Chachalaca down in the bottom right here. Um, I would say they're not plain. Uh, they live in family groups and they're quite large birds, um, sort of chicken size or slightly bigger. And they spend a lot of time making raucous noises and foraging in the undergrowth. So you tend to hear them before you see them. Um, much more diminutive is the um, beautiful flashy vermilion flycatcher. So even though it's small, you're not going to miss that beautiful red flash as it flies up from a bush um, to get its um, prey. Uh, Matthew also mentioned crested caracara here over on the bottom left, and we tend to see them quite commonly in the along the road verges actually, where they usually scavenge for roadkill. 
So we can see those down in Texas too. And then again, I think Matthew took all my thunder. Uh, we have the scissor tail flycatcher. Fly and again, they sit up on the wires in Texas. So you can usually spot them quite easily as they're, they're flycatching. Um, there's plenty more birds. Um, so of course, I just have to give you a, a flashy selection here. Um, the three at the, uh, over at the top and the left, um, we can see commonly uh, bird feeding stations. Um, they are quite common. So in the top right, we've got green jay and they tend to be in family groups when they feed. So they're also quite loud and gregarious. And as you can see, the great Kiskadee making plenty of noise there on the left. And at the bottom, uh, we have the golden fronted woodpecker. So these are all pretty common, but all gorgeous birds um, to look out for. Now, somewhat harder to find is the common paraki, which is down there on the right. <laughs> it is a, a bird that is similar to a, a night jar. Um, but during the day, it roosts on the ground and it's usually hidden under the bushes and so it's quite hard to see, as you can tell, it's very camouflaged against the leaf litter there and the branches and twigs. But we have a few sites where we know they are. So we'll pay, we'll pay special attention in those areas to try and find them because they are a wonderful bird to see. And it's not just birds, there are also plenty of mammals too. Um, I just picked a few here. I think again, armadillo, nine-banded armadillo found in Florida. Um, they're also found in Southern Texas. Uh, they are quite amuse amusing to watch because uh, they spend most of their time with their noses in the ground and searching and digging up uh, ants, termites and other invertebrates. And again, like the plain chachalacas, you probably hear them before you see them because they're always snuffling around in the undergrowth. Um, but I, I find them quite fascinating. Down at the bottom, this is a javelina, collared peccary. Uh, it does look like a pig, but um, they split off from pigs many, many years ago. Um, Adam mentioned that they're also found in um, Arizona too. Uh, the females and the young hang out in family groups and the boars tend to be uh, solo. Um, and they have a, they're also called skunk pigs actually, because they have um, a scent gland on their rump with which they spread their messages to each other as to where they've been and whose territory's whose. And so it's great to find those. And there's quite a few in Southern Texas. And then up in the top left there, we have Eastern Fox Squirrel, which is the largest squirrel, tree squirrel in, in America. So we'll take a look, of, look for those. And some of them are very, very red, actually. This one's quite gray. So we will be looking out for everything. Um, we'll also be heading out on a couple of special trips the first of which is a boat trip into Aransas National Wildlife Refuge. And we shall be going there particularly to look for the hooping cranes. Once upon a time, back in the sort of early 1900s, there were probably less than 20 hooping cranes left. Nowadays, there are well over 500 um, individuals living in North America. Um, so that was a successful turnaround of this species. They uh, spend their summers in the North breeding, and then they come down to the south in Texas and Florida, actually, um, for the winter. But there are a couple of um, resident families, actually, in Aransas National Wildlife Refuge. So we'll be heading out early in the morning on the boat, as you can see, and we'll be looking for those. And there's plenty of other um, wildfowl, water birds to see on the boat trip and also bottlenose dolphins. And the other special trip we'll be doing is while we're in the hill country, we'll be visiting um, a bat cave. So the Mexican free-tailed bats spend their winters down in Mexico, but then they come back north um, from spring till autumn. And they, there are hundreds and thousands of them living in this particular bat cave. And so we'll be there in the evening to watch them fly out. And apparently it is an amazing spectacle. Um, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Mexican free-tailed bats. Now, also in uh, southern Texas, we have plenty of butterflies. It is a fantastic place to go if you're really interested in butterflies. We have the National Butterfly Center, um, which is down near McAllen. 
which we'll be spending probably a couple of mornings in exploring their gardens. And the great thing about Southern Texas is there are lots and lots of different butterfly gardens as well, not just the Butterfly Center. So we get plenty of opportunity to look for some of the specialty species and the residents, of course. And some of the beautiful, I think personally, some of my favorites here are Mexican blue wing, uh, guava skipper and red bordered pixie. And there's plenty more than that. There are hundreds. So, and you get lots and lots of um, specialties coming up from Mexico. And of course, we can't go down there without seeing reptiles and amphibians. Um, the first of which is the Rio Grande leopard frog, which we see occasionally, but um, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, frog to see. Um, there's the other frogs as well, which are the, the one in the, the other corner, the right hand corner. It's the uh, green tree frog. Now we have to make a special effort to look for these because they're nocturnal and they're usually found on uh, the windows and walls of buildings. So we'll take a special look at a couple of places where we stay. And then the reptiles, we've got the alligator up in the, uh, the top right there. And of course, Texas horned lizard, which are amongst my favorite of the lizards. And then they, we can't really go without looking for some of the specialty bird species in the area. So while we're in the hill country, we'll be looking for the black cap vireo, which is at the top left, and also the golden cheek warbler. We have a couple of wonderful sites for these two birds, but we'll have to make a special effort and walk through the, the woods and the hills to find them. And then over on the right, a little bit more widely distributed around Southern Texas, are the Altamara Oriole on the top right, and then the buff-bellied hummingbird. Um, they're not as common as some of the previous birds that I mentioned, so we do have to look for them and they are very special when you see them. So here we have our Eastern Screech Owl, who actually is a resident at the National Butterfly Center. So he is hopefully going to welcome you to one of our upcoming tours to Texas. And the next one is actually the 25th of March, to the 7th of April, 2023. So we look forward to welcoming you to Southern Texas and Southern hospitality. So moving on, again, like Adam, I have to do a whistle tops tour in 20 minutes. So <laughs> we're now jumping from Southern Texas to the far North actually of America. We are heading to the Dakotas. Now the Dakotas aren't probably states that you would think of visiting. Um, even some Americans would go, why are you going to the Dakotas? Um, but North Dakota and South Dakota are beautiful states. The, um, the habitat is fantastic. The wildlife is outstanding. And entwined with all this wonderful, um, lovely um, environment are the icons and legends of this area. So names that you might have heard of like Sacagawea, Lewis and Clark, Wild Bill Hickok, Jane Cannery, Crazy Horse, and General Costa. So these are totally involved in all of this trip, as well as the wildlife. So let me show you for a start where the Dakotas are. So the yellow block at the top of the United States map are the Northern Plains, and North Dakota and South Dakota are the two states on the right hand of that yellow block. So I've zoomed in now in the lower right here, and you can see there's the Missouri River and South Dakota, North Dakota. So this trip is actually a one-way trip, starting in Rapid City in South Dakota, and then we head north via the Badlands and the Black Hills, and we have a short stint into Wyoming. Then we turn north again, and we head up through the Little Missouri Grasslands in North Dakota, through Theodore Roosevelt National Park, and then heading into the pot country, which is north of the Missouri River, before we head back to Bismarck, where the tour ends and everyone flies home. So there's a lot of change in habitat throughout this tour, which is why there is such a variety of wildlife to see. So I'd like to introduce you now to some of the, uh, the species of this area. And as I mentioned, because of the different habitats, um, we have forest, we have mountains, we have um, beautiful rivers within those mountains and canyons. And of course we have the plains. So we have a huge variety of specialized species. The top left, we have um, Lewis's woodpecker, 
um, namesake of obviously Meriwether Lewis, who traveled with Clark on the, uh, the journey up the Missouri River to find the, um, um, the passage to the Northwest, and they were guided by Sacagawea. Um, in the bottom right, we have the American Dipper, also found in the, um, the hills and the mountains and the streams. And then we have the plain species. Um, we have a boring owl on the top right there, and I know Matthew mentioned those <laughs> in Florida. So the boring owls get round a bit, and you can see he stood on his hole there. And then also another plain species in the bottom left is Fruginus hawk. And you cannot go to the Dakotas without seeing mammals. I think probably after Alaska, Yellowstone, California, the Dakotas are amongst the best states in which to see mammals in North America. So starting from the top, we've got bighorn sheep, um, which we can see quite clearly in the, uh, the Badlands. And then we've got the American red squirrel, which we find in the forests. Um, back on the plains, we find the bison and then the mountain goat in the bottom left there, they're usually found in the mountains, particularly around the, um, the Black Hills. And then I think this is my favorite squirrel in North America and it's 13 lined ground squirrel. And that we find obviously in the plains and the grasslands. But there's still more. Um, we have more squirrels, plenty of squirrels to see. So we've got yellow bellied mama in the bottom left. Um, Black-tailed prairie dogs, um, obviously found in the prairies, and then least chipmunk in the top right there. And we have some wild mustangs in the bottom left here, and they're found in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So as I mentioned, there are many, many legends and icons that are entwined into this area. Um, and so we're gonna vis visit some of these cultural um, sites um, first of all will be Mount Rushmore, which you can see there in the top right. And there's kudos to anyone who can name those four presidents from left to right. Um, then we also visit the, uh, the antithesis, I suppose, of Mount Rushmore. This is the, uh, whoops, the statue um, being built in the mountain to Crazy Horse, who was a Lakota Sioux warrior who fought General Custer over the, the area that the Lakota Sioux called home, which is the Black Hills, and Costa visited for the gold, of course. So we'll visit there. And then also we'll be taking a trip, this is our short trip into Wyoming, to Bear's Teepee or Devil's Monument. And some may be familiar with this from close encounters of the third kind, I think. Um, and all of these places are wonderful. They, they are not only tourist destinations, but they're surrounded by beautiful habitat and lots of wildlife. So we'll certainly be taking a look at what we can find there and also imbibing some of the history and culture of the area. So I know we're much further north than uh, Florida and Texas and all those warm subtropical states, but um, so we're not, we don't have the, the same number of butterflies and reptiles, but there are a few. So starting on the top, top left, we have Old World Swallowtail and Milbert's Tortoiseshell. Um, and then in the bottom left, we've got Snowberry Clearwing, which is a, a moth to be found in that part of the, the United States. And we've got Greater Shorthorn Lizard here in the bottom right, um, all of which can be found in this area and we'll certainly take a look for them. So I don't want to um, go any further without mentioning some of the wonderful places we're gonna be staying on this tour. As I've mentioned, we're staying in the forests and the hills, the mountains and the ranch land, which uh, on the plains. So we are gonna be staying in a variety of lodges um, and also logging camp ranch, which is in the heart of the Little Missouri National Grasslands. Um, this again is a ranch that is a still a working ranch, but they also cater for wildlife tourists and um, we'll be staying in this um, cabin or it's a huge sort of log cabin house um, in the bottom left here and we'll be exploring the ranch for about two days um, and we could actually see um, sharp-tailed grouse at the ranch. Um, so some gorgeous, gorgeous, lovely lodges to stay in. And then I'm just going to finish off now with a couple or a few high plain speciality species. The first of which is pronghorn in the top left. 
and this is the only antelope in the North Americas, and it's also the fastest antelope in the world. Um, however, strangely enough, it can't actually jump, so it would be unable to actually clear that barbed wire fence that you can see behind it. It has to sort of scramble through, so it's quite amusing when, when you have to see them <laughs> uh, struggle their way through a, a fence, but they can do it. Um, so we'll certainly be taking a look for those. This one was a lone male, whereas you normally see them in, in small herds. And there's also on the right here, we have a chestnut collared long spur, which is a type of bunting, also found in the high plains. So we'll be taking a look for those. And in the bottom, two other plain species are upland sandpiper and long billed curlew. So as you can see, there are plenty of to see in the Dakotas, plus all the wonderful landscapes and scenery and culture. So here I have a couple of slides of the, the scenery. The, the left-hand side is the Badlands of South Dakota, and then up on the right there is the Black Hills of the Dakotas, um, which is where Spearfish Canyon lodges where we'll be staying. 